Taurus. Hello, Taurus. Happy New Year. And uh, I feel that this is a year that's really going to be working for you in so many ways of those things that you've been longing for, hoping for, desiring. And so what I like to do is when we look at the whole year at one, I love to follow the Mars cycles because that is your drive. It's your goals, your ambitions, your energy, and those things that you set out to achieve. So in 2015, you started off the year with some reflections, all right? January for you was pulling back a little bit and then came the gush of energy where you were expanding and focusing on yourself, your persona, getting up to spiff with yourself, then looking into your financial situation. You were working through what has to do with siblings there. Also family, foundation, home and property then children here as we were closing off towards the end of 2015 coming into also December of 2015 where focus has been more on your day-to-day -day routines, schedules and so forth. That is where 2016 is going to start off. So having found that balance, now trying to conclude this here in January, you are going to be moving and shifting your focus into your partner. Mars in the seventh house will be about how you relate and share with your significant other. It is in the sign of Scorpio, so you can expect some intensity taking uh, place here and picking up its energy. There's going to be those things where you're going to be bonding that much stronger, making plans for the next two years in this area at least planting the seeds. If Mars takes two years to go around that chart once, so you're going to have this with you for an extended time because Mars is also going to retrograde back into it. So in the overall Taurus, I'd like to say between January and that of June 23rd, for the most part, uh, Mars will be in this area for you. Actually, we're looking into July because Mars is going to retrograde. Now you're going to have a dip into uh, your eighth house where it will move into the sign of Sagittarius at least up to those eight degrees it will retrograde from April 18th to June 30th so you will have a little feel of how it is you're going to be sharing your resources with this significant other or whoever it is you're working with closely then it's going to go back into the seventh house of relationships to 23 degrees of Scorpio. So you will have that way into July before it moves out of these areas. So that's an extended time to really figure out where you're heading, what you're wanting to secure, what you're wanting to um, evolve in this relationship of yours. Those of you who are single, well, this will give you extra time to perhaps find that significant new person, the soulmate in your life. And you will make sure too that you're getting all the details right because of this long journey in this area where it normally just moves quickly, you know, within a few weeks, you're going to have months to develop this area. So love, romance, fairness, balance, all of those things are going to be quite uh, important. Then Mars is going to be moving into here late summer into your ninth house. This would be a wonderful time for you to take that extended vacation. And when I say extended, well, out maybe long distance, not just out of town for a weekend trip. We're talking about maybe out of state, out of country, especially out of country is what's really going to be uh, calling you, wanting to explore and be the adventure of a new culture and new people. Some of you might even want to sign up for a class at this time when we get into July and August. I see you wanting to deepen your consciousness into some topics that might uh, feel it's been calling you for a while. This is the time to do so. And whatever Mars now can research or learn, it's really mustering up the next stage for where it's going to be hitting your career. And so what Mars has accomplished, you can apply 
to your career and see that you can achieve the best time of the last two years uh, within your career and how this is going to open up maybe for some new avenues, some um, brilliant ideas that you can uh, add to what you're already doing. It might also want to take a different corner, but this too is going to behoove you. And then Mars is going to end up end of the year 2016 in your 11th house. So expect their November, December to really be social for you. And it is the time of the holidays. What better time to have a very active Mars in this area? If you have your pen and notepad out, we're going to be looking at and going through a few of the retrogrades for 2016 and how they can come to behoove you. Now, yes, we think retrogrades, oh my God, delays, things going haywire. And that is like the normal stereotype uh, understanding that we have about retrogrades. However, though, I am of the belief that we need to embrace and really love our retrogrades for the most part. Sure, we can experience delays. Sure, we can experience something going off kilter. But for the most part, what retrogrades is, is a blessing in disguise. It gives us extended time in a certain area where we get to focus on those details more so than what we do when the planet is direct. When a planet is direct, we're heading down the super highway and it's like we got tunnel visions. We're not really looking at maybe all the details or opportunities that may come up because we're just too super busy. When retrograde comes along, we may look at those opportunities from the past that might come back around to us as a second chance. We get to incorporate, re tweak, rework, and get things more so up into the way that we really want them so that in the aftermath, we will see how it really has worked for us and behooved us in wonderful ways. So it is an extended, I'd like to say gift, but it's always in the aftermath that we can see why those delays came in. It stopped us in our tracks so that we can perfect our ways. So I want to speak a little bit about Jupiter here first. Jupiter will retrograde January 8th through May 10th. However, though, it's not going to be before August 11th that it will move out of its shadow and pass the very degree where it started retrograding, and that is January 23rd. Now, Jupiter for you is in such a blessed place here. I think you're one of the lucky ones here, Taurus. Uh, it's in the fifth house for joy, expansion, uh, generosity. It's within love and relationships. Some of you will find new relationships in this period. Others of you who are already into a relationship, well, you will be expanding your togetherness. There is joy there is creativity. It's bringing out that inner, should I say, sun child uh, to come out and play and explore, have adventures. And it's also the area of children. So some of you will come to see that children will be more important. They're always important, but where focus upon them will become more important here this year. And uh, also looking back to the past, your relationship with them. How is that working for you? Could things now improve itself? We have Jupiter here that is a blessed, she has a guardian angel. It also rules higher justice. So some of that may come in where we're trying to find the optimum best for the child, the children, uh, and your interaction with them. And also what can actually be very supportive to help them grow and expand with this Jupiter too. So we see the fifth house also rules your business. So if you are self-employed, Jupiter here in 2016 is going to help you. It's probably one of the best years of the next 12 years for self-employment. So if you have had thoughts about wanting to start your business, this would be the year to do so even here at the end of 2015, if you're listening to this forecast somewhat early. Under the period between January 8th and 10th would not be the best time to launch. It would be the time for you to research, get all your decks in a row, how this new business can uh, work for you, and then get to it. 
after May 10th, you got the rest of the year to do so. Now we have four Mercury retrogrades this year. The first one here, Taurus, is starting up January 5th through January 25th. It starts out one degree in your 10th house of career in the sign of Aquarius. So it's only going to linger there for just a little tad, and then it's going to move back into your ninth house. So when Mercury is in the ninth house, ninth house is all about insights, higher understanding, education, research. It also rules the area of publishing or also travel. So you might just come to see that this is what January is going to do for you. Now, if you're thinking of wanting to move ahead in your career, then use this retrograde to get all the details that you need so you can be prepared and armed when you get into the 10th house here in February and to see how you can actually communicate those things that are important to you. Uh, maybe set up an interview or a review here with your supervisor um, or your boss or also just wanting to get all your ducks in a row here so Mercury can get you ahead. April 29th through May 23rd, 23 degrees in your sign. That's the first house where Mercury is going to retrograde next. Now, this retrograde being in the first house in your sign is going to allow you here, Taurus, to really look at what it is you want. The first house is all about the I am energy. So you're going to see how your communication and what it is you're communicating is messages going through. Are they hearing you? those who are around you. There might be some little miscommunications coming in, but that allows you to also step up to a higher level so you can observe how you're communicating and how it is coming across, perfecting that. And it's also you now having a wonderful time to be able to front those things that are important to you here as a Taurian. The third retrograde of Mercury is August 31st through September 22nd. It is starting off 29 degrees in Virgo and this is your sister sign so that's going to work for you. Uh, Virgo for you is the fifth house of children, leisure, also just being or having should I say a happy-go-lucky time enjoying and expressing and sharing time with love and romance your partner or also working over matters or issues that may come up between you and a loved one. So in that, it will give you that time to kind of balance, look at, organize, straighten out those issues that might have accumulated over time. Great time to work through it. And also there might be some work through here as far as your children. Now, it is also the area of, again, your um, self-employment, uh, if you have your own business, this would be the time to look at what works for you. That is great. You keep that. What needs to be tweaked? That's great. You eliminate that because this is also, we're always in this evolution of growing. And so from time to time, we need to weed out certain things. Now, December 19th through January 8th of 2017, Mercury is going to retrograde here, the last one for uh, this year, 15 degrees in Capricorn. This is also a sister sign of yours, so it's not going to be all that bad. It is in the ninth house, so justice, things of the law. If you have anything outstanding, you might want to get your ducks in a row with it, but it has to do with research, looking into matters, studying Getting into that area of higher knowledge, it is really arming yourself here, equipping yourself with insights. So if you can use this period here, it will really behoove you, Taurus, because why? Yes, Mercury, after this phase, once you get in there to January, it's going to be moving into your 10th house again for career. So for you, it is a time to, to actually start thinking about strategizing what it is you want to accomplish so that you can be powerful as you start off 2017 with better footing, better knowledge to get you ahead. 
So this is pretty much what we have here now, just the outlines. And of course, we're going to be digging deeper into your month to month forecast, looking at all the other planets, looking at their aspects and transits like we normally do. So I will see you when we get back to that. But in the meantime here, you might be curious to see what's going on with your partner to see what he or she may be able to expect here in the new year for them and of course if you listen to your moon and rising sign too Taurus it will give you more insights for what that Jupiter can bring you which is going to be a great great harvester for you it is your sister sign so it, it, it's not like having it in your sign but it's training your sign which is really a blessing and a benefit It'll be exciting to see what the taroscopes are going to bring you for 2016. They're coming out here fairly soon as well. So stay tuned or subscribe to be sure to receive them as well. So I will see you here very soon. I'll see you next month. So in the meanwhile, have a good one and have a blessed and fantastic 2016.